Welcome to Monday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony, and let's get into another week in our series entitled No Condemnation. Believe it or not, this is our fifth week in this series, and we're not quite done yet. This is such an important thing that I, I felt like this should, first of all, be a Renew Plus, an expanded version of our daily podcast. But second of all, we need to spend the time necessarily to deal with this root issue in a lot of people's problems. And again, we've already pointed this out already that condemnation, and I'll just say self-condemnation for the believer, is that is that root that's underneath the surface that really robs people of faith, robs people of strength, robs people of the power of God and the overcoming life, the blessed life that God provided for all of us who are in Christ Jesus. Now, we have also have some other uh, things online, free downloads, other series that I've done in the church, Church 316 is the church I pastor, that you can go in and download and get even more in-depth, and I encourage you to do that. One of them is entitled simply No Condemnation, just like this podcast is. The other one is a more expanded verse-by-verse, in-depth study on this, one we did simultaneously midweek, and it's entitled No Condemnation uh, Extra Edition. So I encourage you to go online and listen to those. You'll get even more uh, revelation, more understanding, more in-depth than what we're able to go through on this uh, daily podcast. But I believe we're covering some major issues that are going to help you and, and free you up from condemnation. And I, again, I want to stress it's self-condemnation. Now, let's go to our key verse here, uh, found in Romans chapter 8. Romans the 8th chapter, verse number 1 again. We ought to be familiar with this verse by now. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now again, we just want to point out the fact that this is a now reality. It's a present day, present tense reality. There is therefore now, right now, not when we get to heaven. Of course, when we get to heaven, there's no condemnation. But right now, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And again, it says, therefore, there is now no condemnation. I want to emphasize the fact in the Greek that that is emphatic. It says, absolutely no trace of condemnation whatsoever to those who are in Christ Jesus. And again, in Christ Jesus is the key for walking free of condemnation and self-condemnation in this life right now. It really matters who you identify with. If you're, if you're still seeing yourself as the old person, as the old man, still under sin, still have that sin consciousness, then you're going to be, you're going to have a problem with that self-condemnation that we're talking about. And again, it's going to rob you of your faith. It's going to rob you of your strength of the power of God, of victory, of the blessed life that God intended for us to live in Christ Jesus. So we need to learn to identify with Christ. That's why over 130 times in Paul's writings, in the epistles, in the New Testament, Paul uses that phrase, in Christ, or in whom, or in him, or something similar to that right there. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, God is wanting to get that across to us, that we're no longer, as believers, as Christians, outside of Jesus. We're in, in Christ. Our life is hidden together uh, in Christ Jesus. So what does that mean right there? Well, in Christ, I am forgiven of all sin. I'm cleansed. Sin no longer exists in my life. This is a reality that there is no condemnation to us. Now, why is that? Because Jesus came and became sin for us. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says it this way. He, talking about Jesus, who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Now Jesus didn't commit any sin of his own. He wasn't on the cross because of his misdeeds and wrongdoings because of his own sins. He was there as our substitute. He identified with us completely. And when he did that, he absorbed all of our sin upon himself. And that therefore he was punished for our sin. He was condemned for our sin. He suffered and absorbed all the condemning sinners, all the punishment that was due to us. He absorbed that in his own body when he hung on the cross. And you know what? He did away with it once and for all. Boy, that's good news. That is the gospel message. That is the centerpiece of the gospel. 
the forgiveness of sin, the cleansing of sin, this reality of no condemnation to us in Christ, this is not just part of the gospel. This is the centerpiece of the gospel. This is the very foundational issue of the gospel, is the fact that Jesus came and dealt with the sin issue. And of course, we could not do that. Jesus did that for us. So as mo the more I see myself in Christ, the more I see myself identified with Him by faith, these realities become realities in my life now, then there is no basis for condemnation at all for us who are in Christ. Now, notice in verse number 3 and 4, it says, For what the law could not do, and then it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. So notice that the law never was the answer for sin. It never was the answer for doing away with sin. It actually came and exposed sin. And we've already seen it before in other scriptures. Uh, Romans 5, 19, 20, it says when the law entered, sin abounded. It got worse. It didn't get better. The law didn't come to do away with sin. The law came to expose sin to us and the sin issue and the sin problem, but also lead us to the avenue of, of God's answer for the sin problem and the sin issue and getting and uprooting this condemnation in our own life. Now, it says what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. So, so again, there was nothing wrong with the law. It came from God, but there was a problem with us. We had a weakness in ourselves. We couldn't keep the law. We couldn't even begin to keep the law in the kind of perfection that God does, uh, you know, uh, the law demanded out of us. So, but what the law could not do because of the weakness of our flesh, because of self, we couldn't produce this kind of right standing with God. We couldn't earn our way out of, uh, in the forgiveness of sin. We couldn't earn our way out of this condemnation that was hanging over all our head. But notice this, what the law could not do, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now, verse four, it says that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit so notice the law couldn't produce right standing with god acceptance with god this life of no condemnation forgiveness of sin but jesus did this that the righteous requirements of the law that we couldn't keep that we couldn't do that god did this through christ they are fulfilled in us who walk by faith, who walk in this identification with Jesus. Boy, that's awesome right there. It said that's a reality. You know, all these are right now present day realities. This is the way things really are in the spirit. God sees you in your spirit. And God sees you not under condemnation. He's not angry with us anymore. He's not mad at you for old sins. Why? Because he doesn't remember them. He remembers what his son did in his death, burial, resurrection. He remembers the cross. And see, he wants us to focus and remember on that as well. The more we focus on Jesus and the less we focus on us, the more we're going to walk in this freedom from condemnation. The more you try to fulfill the righteous requirements of the law by yourself, the more you try to focus on yourself and center everything on what you can do, the more you're going to walk in self-condemnation. And see, that's the real issue right now for all of us because Jesus has already abolished sin. He's already done away with it. But the issue still remains in our own mind and consciousness. We still have that, that sin and unworthy consciousness that we've got to change. It's, we've got to renew our mind to think like we are new creations in Christ. We're born again. We're not the, the same as we used to be. We're not the old man anymore. We're not under sin. We are now in Christ. And as we quote many times around here, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, as he is right now, present tense, so are we right now in this world. That's why there's no condemnation. That's why there's no sin existing in our life. But see, our mind, our consciousness, our heart has to catch up with these realities. That's why we're dealing with this. That's why we're ministering this like we are. Because as you renew your mind to these New Covenant, New Testament principles and realities that we're going over again and again and get these established and rooted down inside of you and get your eyes and your focus off of yourself and on Jesus, I tell you, the more freedom you're going to walk in, the more of this no condemnation life that you're going to be able to enjoy now 
And the more God's blessing, victory, and strength and power you're going to be able to walk in right now in this present life. So this sin consciousness issue is still an issue for every person, even for the believer. Because even in a reality, in your spirit, you've already been born again, you've been cleansed of sin. God doesn't see you in your sin anymore. He sees you in Christ. We still have to renew our minds and deal with this sin consciousness. And how you deal with that is going to be is going to have everything to do how much of this freedom you walk in in life how much of this no condemnation that you're going to walk in in life now let's look over to Romans chapter 10 and uh, verse number uh, uh, let's just start with verse 1 it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge you know you can have a lot of zeal for God you can be all fired up for it. There's a lot of religious zealots that have no knowledge and they're going in the wrong direction. You know, you can you can uh, go 120 miles an hour in the wrong direction. You're 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 covering ground. I mean, you're zealous in your in your vehicle and your mode of transportation. You're going somewhere in a in a short amount of time, but you can also be heading away from things. You can be heading in the wrong direction and reach the wrong destination. Well, knowledge helps us focus on the right thing. I'm talking about right knowledge contained in the New Covenant. So it says in verse 3, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. So I want you to see right there, you're going to go one way or another. You can be a zealous, but you can be seeking to establish your own righteousness. In other words, by your own self-effort, by your own self-works, and your own self-centeredness, you're trying to gain this life of no condemnation. You're trying to deal with the sin issue and the sin consciousness. You're never going to get there that way. And you can be going 120 miles an hour, but you're going in the wrong direction. So you got to get you. You have to get over the ignorance of God's righteousness because your righteousness is never going to cut it. It's never going to be able to uproot the the sin issue and the sin consciousness, even in a believer. So it says, they being ignorant of God's righteousness, seeking to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Verse 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Now notice that Jesus becomes the end of the law. That's self-effort. You, you, you reach the end of trying to attain this by your own self-effort and your self-works and your self-righteousness when you come to the knowledge of Christ and what he did for us in his death, burial, and resurrection. Now that verse does not mean, of course, that we're lawless. We're going to find out later on that God took the laws that were written, that he wrote on the, on the stone tablets, and he wrote those by nature in our hearts. So by nature, we're doing the things that are contained in the law that they couldn't do. But God wants us to have a right relationship with Him. He wants us to be free of sin consciousness. He wants us to live this life of no condemnation. But the only way you're going to get there is to have knowledge of His righteousness, meaning through the work, the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, His death, burial, resurrection. That's the only way you're going to be able to uproot sin consciousness and live a life of no condemnation in this life. And that's what we're getting to. And that's what God wants us to do in this life. Well, that's all the time I've got for Monday's podcast. If you'd like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org, and we will see you tomorrow.